y'all, this is Dana here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do uh, what's called blended threads. I've actually had quite a few people asking me about this, and I'll show you a little sample right here. You can see, I don't know if you can see with the... I don't know if it's going to focus on it. I'll show you in a moment once I start stitching. But basically, blended threads, uh, you can see this here. This is actually a, a Blaine Billman's pattern called Spirit of the Sockeye. It's beautiful. But you can see in here the different tones. So these are actually, some of these are straight colors and some of these are actually blended threads. And all a blended thread is, is you're combining one color, one strand of one color and one strand of another color. It's usually only one strand of each. I haven't yet seen a pattern where it's like two strands of one color and one of another. Uh, the pattern will tell you that though. Uh, so you can see here on my little, this is my little chart here. All right, just a second, just trying to focus this. You can see here, this is my little, so these are all the symbols that are in the pattern, and I've actually written down, so that one there is three tenths, that's black, this one is black, plus one strand of the dark gray, solid color, solid color, it's a blend here, and what I've done as well is I've actually, this is uh, some of my threads here, my little bobbins. I've got a video uh, about how to sort your threads onto bobbins if you like, I can link to that in the video description. So you can see I've got all the, the color numbers here, and then the symbols of the ones where they are going to be a blended thread. So that way, I if I have any leftovers of a particular blend, like say I'm using like um, only a short section, of maybe like around here or something like that, I'm just doing a little section of it, that way I can put any extra blended threads onto here and keep them separate from the solid colors. So that's how I sort them anyway. So blended threads are really common in bigger patterns, like something like this where it's... Um, it's very, it's got a lot of tones in it. Uh, things like uh, really big patterns like uh, Heaven and Earth Designs have a lot of blended threads, so you're going to be using one strand of one and one strand of another. Um, I've got one pattern right now that uses blended threads. That's my uh, Poppy Cup Cozy pattern. It's a mix of a orange and a, or, sorry, a yellow and a red to make sort of a marbled orange color. You can see that in the video. And well, what I'll be doing is showing you how to do this just because um, it is a nice option, especially for things like in the last video, I don't know if you saw about Krennic um, Metallics. They have this lovely stuff. This is what this gold filament is here. I'll show you the... This is it here. It's... Um, sorry, I'm trying to focus. It's like a really fine tinsel. It's really, really fine. And if you look really carefully at it, you'll see... It's, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but um, it's actually one very very fine strand of the metallic and then a, a core, a, a, a thin core, and that helps keep it, give it strength. So this stuff is designed to actually be used with a strand of another floss. It just basically gives a little bit of a shimmer and a metallic um, look to something. You can use this on its own. I would use two strands of it if you're going to use it on its own. It gives a really delicate uh, metallic look to things. So you can use that or you can uh, blend just straight cotton threads, two strands of cotton threads. So I'm going to show you how I would blend them. So I've got one strand of white here and I'm going to be blending and I've got some dark gray. I'm going to be blending. Usually uh, it depends on the pattern but usually sorry I'm trying to focus. It's not going to work obviously. Um, usually for patterns you would be uh, using tones that are quite similar to each other so that way you get that kind of nice gradation like you can see in here. So this is a little trick if you don't know is you grab the end of your cut floss and you tap it and that'll help you pull your strands out individually. So you just pull it up very slowly and then what I'm gonna do, sorry if this isn't too visible because the way the camera is set up, is I always, you have to make sure you're threads are cut at the same lengths, obviously. So you try to match them up like that. Sorry, focusing is just not working today. Anyway, give me a second. So you're going to match them up. And so what I'm going to be doing uh, with this, for anchoring the threads, because you are using two... I'm sorry, the camera's just not wanting to focus on it. This is way too small. Um, it'll work once... there we go. It'll work better once I start stitching. Uh, because you're using two cut threads like this, you can't use the loop method, which is a really um, cool way to, to anchor your thread when you're starting threads. Again, I'll put a link to that in the video description below. Um, so you can't use the loop method when you're using blended threads, so you can either use a small knot, and I know some stitchers are really, really, they freak out whenever you talk about knots, but you know, as long as they're small enough that they're not going to leave a lump on the from the front side when you're framing, it's fine. 
you just have to be careful that your um, stitch doesn't your needle doesn't catch it if you're going through the same hole again where the knot is it might pop the knot out through the other side uh, so what you're going to have to do is either use a small knot or you can do uh, what some stitchers do is they like leave a little tail that they then stitch over when they're stitching back the other direction uh, or you can do what's called a pin stitch and that's what I'm going to be doing for this one again if you want uh, the actual description of how to do a pin stitch properly that is in the same video as the loop method sorry I'm just threading my needle here so I will be showing you that so I've got my fabric here so with pin stitch you can come up in one of the corners there's a couple of different ways to do this I've seen uh, for linen this is a little bit different, so if you're using linen. So what I would do is just keep going until you're almost oh, ran through. My white, I guess, is shorter than my gray. That's okay. So I'm just going to stop it before the white goes all the way through. So like I said, normally these would be the same length. All right, so then you're actually, with the Ada, you're going to go right down the center of it. It's a little bit tricky with the tapestry needle because it's not supposed to go in the center, but that's how you do a pin stitch. It's one method you can do a pin stitch. There's a few different ways. Basically, a pin stitch is just a tiny little, little uh, stitch that helps anchor your floss, so it's not the doesn't create a knot, and it actually does hold your fabric. So you come up the same hole again, and that will actually hold. All right. So then you can start your stitching. So you can see how the threads lie next to each other. So if you're using two colors that are very, very similar to each other, this won't be as noticeable. But if you're using two colors that are quite different, like the white and the gray, you are going to be wanting to be a little bit more careful with how your threads lie. Um, that's called railroading. Basically, it just means keeping your, your two threads parallel to each other. And one way you can do that is if you hold your thread down and you put your tip of your needle between your two threads, like that, it actually does keep them parallel to each other when you're going through. So that's how you would stitch with the blended threads. And it's a little bit tricky to see on the white because I'm using a white thread, but it does give a really nice tonality, especially if you're going over a bigger area. Uh, it's really good if you're trying to blend two colors that are different next to each other. You can actually do a little section um, of the blended and that will help sort of bring those two tones together. One thing to note too is because you are using two threads, uh, that you'll see this particularly when I do a little bit of stitching with the gold and the blue, um, sometimes one thread will not want to travel as easily through and it'll start to get bunched up so you might get little gaps, like little bits of bubbling almost with one th one of the threads. So do make sure that you're you know, always trying to keep your threads relatively, not tight, but taut enough that they are going to be traveling through the fabric at the same time rate so you're not getting one thread sort of bubbling up every now and then which can happen with if you're using two threads of different textures these are both DMC uh, flosses that I'm using so they are going to be relatively similar so yeah so you can see how that works with the blended thread so it's very similar to using just two strands of normal floss it's just you're combining two different colors so I'll show you a little bit with the, the gold that I've got here got a little bit angled up on my table. So again, you can do a pin stitch to start, you can do a small knot, sort of whatever is easiest for you. I'm just going to hold it on the back. Yeah, some people what they do is they hold it on the back and then stitch once or twice and then actually fold that back across the direction they're going to be stitching and actually catches itself underneath. So there's quite a few ways to anchor your threads. So again, and you can see here, because these two threads are different textures, sometimes the metallic, which is a lighter thread, is going to want to bubble up a little bit more, so you are going to have to just keep checking every now and then, making sure that uh, your threads both are lying the same way. But yeah, you can see it makes a beautiful... I'll just do one more so you can see. It makes a really... the, the blending filament makes it... it just adds a little bit of lovely shimmer to the piece. You can see that there. So yeah, so that's how you would cope with blended threads. Um, other tips? Yeah, if you have any other tips of 
uh, like I don't use a lot of blended threads myself, but I know some stitchers use them all the time in their projects. Like I said, I've been using them a lot in this one here, all through, oops, sorry, focus, all throughout in here, and a lot of in, in the mouth and stuff has a lot of blended threads in there. So, like I said, I've just been using a pin stitch and then just making sure that their tension is, is even. Other than that, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, if you have any other tips uh, from when you've worked a lot with blended threads, please feel free to share them in the uh, the uh, comment section below this video. I'd love to hear them. Uh, if you have any questions, also please feel free to let me know. Uh, this video was uh, as a result of somebody asking me a question about how to use blended threads. She'd never used them before. Um, and actually, it depends on your pattern, too, how they're actually written. Uh, this is the pattern for this one here. I'll just show you the, the key for this so you can actually see here. Uh, they, they've written the black plus one strand of this, this one plus this one. So that's how a blended thread would be written, and then they have their own symbols, obviously the same as any other solid color would. So each pattern is going to be representing this slightly differently, but if you ever see two numbers, like a number plus number, that's a blended thread. So that's all it means, is you're just combining one strand of each thread to make your two strands that you would normally be stitching with. So yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know, and uh, if you like this video, please subscribe, and that way you'll get notified every time a new video comes online, and I will talk to you later. Bye for now!